This is topic 78, separation of variables. So notice that in the past, uh, we have done integrals of, of functions that either have just an x or just a y. But today what we're going to do is we're going to take an integral of something that has both an x and a y. And this is just a little bit more difficult, and we're going to use a method called separation of variables. So if you remember what we did on lesson 77, it's going to be very similar. What we're going to do here is we're going to multiply both sides times dx and then integrate that. Basically, we're trying to get all the stuff that has x's to the left and everything that, ha or everything that has y's to the left and everything that has x's to the right. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to multiply both sides times y, and that will get rid of this y. So that will give me y dy. Okay, and then the other side of the equal sign, notice that I would have x by itself. I'm going to multiply both sides times dx. So I would have the integral of negative x dx. All right, and then now I'm going to integrate each side with respect to, and the left side with respect to y, and on the right side with respect to x. That is that the goal here is to find the function f of x that contains the point 2, negative 3. All right, so if we integrate this side, we're only going to get y squared over 2. Okay, and on the right side, we would get negative x squared over 2 plus c. Okay, for that, the next thing we have to do is we have to plug in. Notice that we have a little bit more complicated than just y is equal to, and we'll get to that in just a second. But what we need to do is we need to find what this c value is going to be, and we're going to find that by plugging in 2 and negative 3. All right, so we're going to plug in negative 3 for y and 2 for x. So if I plug in a negative 3 here, and if I plug in a 2 here, I would have 9 over 2 is equal to negative 4 over 2 plus c. And then I would have to add 4 over 2 to both sides, and I would get c is equal to 13 over 2. Okay. So now, uh, my equation, f of x, or actually in this case, y squared over 2 is equal to negative x squared over 2 plus 13 over 2. Right, and my goal here is to get f of x, which means I'm going to try to get this y by itself. So I'm going to solve for y. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply everything times 2. So multiply both the left side and the right side by 2, and I would get y squared is equal to negative x squared plus 13. And then I'm going to take the square root of both sides, which will give me y is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative x squared plus 13, like that. And now the only thing I, I want to make sure that I do is that I want to have the equation that has this point 2, negative 3. Okay, so if you actually graph this, all right, so if you go to your graphing calculator, you don't have to have one necessarily right now. And you put, you know, y is e y1 is the positive and y2 is the negative square root. And you graph it. Okay, notice that point 2, negative 3 is actually located on the negative square root. Okay, so... My answer, therefore, has to be y is equal to negative square root of negative x squared plus 13. Okay. And again, I, and I'm writing this for the sake of the notes, but I just said this. So if you look at if you look at the graph. Point two negative three is on the negative square root, and that's the reason I didn't write both of these. I only wrote one. Okay, so that's how that works. So let's go to problem number two. So all of these are going to follow the same basic principle. It's just a matter of how good are you at algebra. So the first thing we're going to do here is I'm going to change this from the square root of st to s to the one half t to the one-half, okay? And now I'm going to do exactly the same thing that I did in example one. I'm going to try to get all the s terms on the left and all the t terms on the right. Okay, so if 
first thing I want to do here is I'm going to have the integral of, uh, let's see, 1 over s to the 1 half ds. And again, notice that I divided both sides by s to the 1 half. And that's going to be equal to t to the 1 half dt. And again, I multiply both sides times dt, and that's how I got that. Okay, so if I have that, okay, I'm going to try to simplify this a little bit more so I can do this. So this is the same thing as s to the power of negative 1 half ds. And this is just t to the 1 half dt. And now I'm going to integrate. Easy enough to integrate now. So the answer to this one would be, let's see, if I add 1 to this, I get s to the 1 half power. And if I divide by a half, that's the same thing as multiplying times 2 here. So I get 2s to the 1 half. And that's equal to, again, add 1 to this. So that's going to make it a 3 halves. So we have t to the 3 halves. And if I divide by 3 halves, is the same thing as multiplying times 2 thirds plus c. I notice that this problem is a little bit weird. They're asking us to find, um, well, to find s eventually when t is 9, right? But the first thing we have to do is we have to figure out what the c is. So we're actually going to use those two numbers first. So we're going to use those two numbers to find c, and then at the end we'll do t is equal to 9 in just a second. So to find s, we're going to plug in, we're going to actually plug in a, one for s, like it says there. And we're going to plug in a zero for t. And that's going to give me c is equal to two. Again, that would be zero, right? This would be zero. And that would just be two. So my equation, therefore, should be 2s or 2 square roots of s, however you want to look at it. It's equal to 2 thirds t to the 3 halves plus 2. All right, so that's the equation that I have. Now, they actually want us to find s. They want us to find s when t is equal to 9. So all I have to do is plug in a 9 for t and then solve for s. So we're going to have 2 square roots of s is equal to 2 thirds times 9 to the 3 halves plus 2. Again, that came, that 9 came from right there. All right, I'm going to try to solve for that. Now, 9 to the 3 halves, that's the same thing as the square root of 9, which is 3. And 3 cubed is 27. And then 27 divided by 3 is 9. And then 9 times 2 is 18. So hopefully you should be sort of comfortable with doing this in your head. But I guess if you can't, then, well, I don't know. You should. That's all I'm saying. Well, a little bit of practice, I hope. So we have, that's going to be 18 right there. And then we're going to add that. So we have 2 square roots of s is equal to 20. So square roots of s is equal to 10, right? Because we divide both sides by 2. And then we're going to square both sides. So s is equal to 100. And that's it. So s is 100 when t is 9. OK. So let's go ahead and go to the back now. Example number three. All right, so example number three. And notice again, I have uh, this right here is dy dx. Right, to avoid any confusion, it's the same thing. And we're going to try to do exactly the same thing that we did last time. Try to get all the y terms on one side and all the x terms on the right side, if you will. So. Uh, and that was the natural log of y is sort of in the left side, which is good. So we have the integral of the natural log of y. And uh, see, dy is already on that side also. But now I have this y that I'm going to have to move over. So I'm going to divide both sides by y. And I know that I'm not actually writing this down, but hopefully all I'm doing is just multiplying and dividing in such a way that I get all the y terms on the left side and all the x terms on the right side. All right, using this original function. So this is that right there. And on this side, I'm left over 1 over x. And I'm just going to multiply both sides times dx. So we have 1 over x dx. OK, so now this is where this is hopefully 
is something you sort of recognize at least a little bit. Um, I'm going to use use substitution, okay, because at least I know that if u is the natural log of y, then du should be 1 over y dy, right? So again, notice that this right here would be du, and the natural log of y would just be u. So this would be the integral of u du is equal to, now the integral 1 over x is the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. All right, so that's what that is, so we can just leave that alone. On this side, I would have, you know, u squared over 2, correct? And I want to go ahead and substitute that back, so I would have the natural log of y squared over 2 is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. Okay, so it looks complicated, but it's not terribly bad. Hopefully you still remember u substitution. If not, I go back to one of the previous videos that I did, I don't know, a long time ago. So check that out. Okay, now the next thing we got to do is solve for c. We need to find out what the c value is, and we're going to use that number. All right, so we're going to plug in... We are going to plug in e for y. So we're going to use that point. So we have natural log of e squared over 2 is equal to the natural log, natural log of the absolute value of 1. And the absolute value of 1 is just 1 anyway. But OK, so hopefully you remember the natural log of 1 is just uh, 0. Replace some lead here, excuse me. All right, so that is 0. And the natural log of e is actually 1. All right, so this is actually 1 squared over 2, or just 1 half. So this is 1 half is equal to c. OK, so the answer would be, therefore, the natural log of y squared over 2 is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of x plus 1 half. Now, if you feel uh, fancy and you want to go ahead and do a little bit more work, if you multiply both the left side and the right side times 2, then you would have the natural log of y squared is equal to 2 natural log of absolute value of x plus 1. So either one, it's good. Uh, so I'm just letting you know, for example, if you have a multiple choice and you see an answer like this that doesn't look like that, then something like that must have happened. All right, let's go to example four. Now on example four, excuse me, on example four, we're going to do almost the same thing. All right, and there's, there's a pattern that's going to emerge from example four and five, and hopefully we'll be able to tell by the end of example five. So. One more time, we end up, we start off with uh, dy dx, right, is equal to 3 fourths y. And now we're going to integrate that, so we would have the integral of dy over y is equal to 3 fourths integral of dx. So I left that 3 quarters out. You could have left that 3 quarters and inset the integral. It doesn't matter. All right, so we're going to integrate this. So this right here, notice that I have, well, let me rewrite that. Maybe you can recognize it a little bit better. This is the same thing as 1 over y dy, which the integral of that is natural log of y. So we have the natural log of the absolute value of y is equal to 3 fourths x plus c. Okay, now we're going to use the point zero 010 just like we've done in the past uh, three examples to figure out the c value. So we have a natural log of 10, which the absolute value of 10 is just 10, all right? So notice that I didn't even write the absolute value anymore. It's equal to well, 3 quarters times 0, which is 0, plus c. So c is equal to the natural log of 10. Okay, now I have
have that the natural log of the absolute value of y is equal to 3 fourths x plus the natural log of 10. Okay, so but let's say that I'm asking you for just y. I want to know f of x. Right? So if I'm asking you just for y, I'm going to go ahead and solve for that. Right? And hopefully you remember your relationship between the natural log functions and your e, uh, Euler's number. All right, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use Euler's number here and here to get rid of the natural log. So remember that the natural log and e are actually inverses of one another. So hopefully you remember that from algebra too. I do remember teaching you this, but it's been a while. So that's going to give me y on this side. And this is just going to be e to the 3 fourths x plus the natural log of 10. Okay. But if you remember from your rules of exponents, if I, how did this happen, right? I, I'm adding two things up here on the exponent. So that must have happened from the fact that this is really equal to e to the 3 fourths, 3 fourths x, times e to the natural log, to the power of natural log of 10. Now remember that e and natural log are actually inverses of one another. So this is actually... Uh, this is this whole thing actually just be, ends up being just 10. All right, so all of this is going to be 10. So y is equal to 10 e to the power of 3 fourths x. So that's what you would get. Okay. Now let's go to example number 5, very similar to the one we just finished. So if you didn't get that this time, maybe you'll get it the second time. So in example 5, we're going to go ahead and take the antiderivative of this. So we have 1 over y minus 2. And this would be dy. And this is equal to the integral of sine x dx. Okay. Now let's see if you remember. I, I don't. I can kind of see what's going to happen already. But if you don't, all right. If you see this and you don't know how to integrate it, remember that if I use u substitution, you don't have to necessarily use it if you can already see what's going to happen. If I say that this is u and du, therefore, is going to be the derivative of this, which would be um, actually just the derivative of that is just one, and derivative of two is zero. So this would just be dy. Okay, so really you would have here 1 over u du is equal to, well, the antiderivative of sine or the integral of sine is negative cosine. Cosine x plus c. Alright, so the let's see. Hopefully you still are able to recognize this. The antiderivative of that is the natural log of u, but remember that u was y minus 2, so we have the natural log of the absolute value of y minus 2. And that's equal to negative cosine x plus c. Alright, so that's what I got here. And I'm going to try to get it into y equals form. Notice that at this point, uh, that's part b, but right at this point I can't do anything else because I don't know what what point they want me to use. So. If I want to get y by itself, I'm going to use Euler's number again. All right, and that will give me, let's see, uh, y minus 2 is equal to e to the negative cosine x plus c. And this right here is y is equal to e to the negative cosine x plus c plus 2. Alright, and that's what I have. Now, on the next part, and notice I'm going to tell you something right now that may not make a whole lot of sense, but this right here and this is actually the same. And hopefully that will become more apparent after you do your homework, but notice that that's actually kind of what happened here. Right, so notice that originally I had this right here. Well, you know, originally I had, I don't know, that would have been C here originally because I don't know what that was, and that turned into this. So if, if this was C, that would be C right there. So that's what's going to happen 
you may not believe it, but you probably are going to see that that's what's going to happen when I use this number, all right? Except for C is going to be an actual constant number. But anyway, let's just get this one done so you can see what I'm talking about. So we have natural log. Again, I'm using this original function over here. So I'm starting from here before I did any of this stuff. All right, so we have the natural log of 8 minus 2 is equal to negative cosine running a lead here negative cosine of pi over 2 plus c now cosine of pi over 2 or negative cosine of pi over 2 is 0 so that's actually 0 so we have the c is equal to the natural log of 6 Okay. again the absolute value of 6 is just 6 so that's what I'm putting down so in order for me to solve for y, so I'm going back to this one again and just plugging everything in. So I have the, mm, let me see. So if I start from here, for example, well, actually, I'm going to start from here since I already solved it. OK, so we have y is equal to e negative cosine x plus natural log of 6 plus 2. Right, and again, just for the same reasons of that other one, if I have y is equal to e negative cosine x, that plus can be rewritten like this. And e, well, plus 2. And this right here, that becomes a 6. All right, so this is going to be equal to y is equal to 6 e to the negative cosine x plus 2. And hopefully after you do the homework that becomes a little more um, intuitive, but notice that examples 4 and 5 follow this pattern right here. Right, So it's a, they follow a very similar pattern. Um, anyway, well, that's it.